President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Isn't that what I've been saying needs to happen here? We're spending eighty billion dollars this year up front and back to keep our troops in Western Europe and East Asia, sixty years after World War II, defending prosperous countries like Germany, France, Italy, England, Japan, again countries that can defend themselves against non-existent enemies. Eighty billion dollars. That would pay the tuition of every student, every public university in the United States for two years and three months. Mr. Nader, I see that you're on the ballot here, and you're on the ballot like this in 35 states. Is that not right? I think you can win if, if, if you are very... If you made an appeal to That's people. More like Rocky. Well, you know, this is life and death. I consider you the lesser of evils, but you're a lot better than the other ones. When I said that Ralph Nader was the lesser of evils, I should clarify that I meant among the top three. There were three other candidates who pretty much received no media attention at all. Most Americans realize we could do better, but they're not organized. And what I'm suggesting is that they get organized and elect more rational people. in lieu of the elite display. And thus, make America a place to be proud of. We have some things to be proud of. But we also live in an absurdly inefficient society. And now, the very evil empire which we live under <laughs> it's a is threatening all life on planet Earth due to its inefficiency and allowance of the dominance of greed. People think that we should trust the powers that be, but think about it. If the powers that be were concerned about us, why would tobacco, which contains arguably the most addicting substance known to man and accounts for some 400,000 American deaths each year, be perfectly legal, while our alternatives are outlawed? Low-potency cannabis would likely save a lot, thousands of American lives every year. People could get off and smoke tobacco. Every day it's the same thing. Sprayed whether you want to be or not. George Bush, when speaking to an agricultural group on February 8th, 2002 said, quote, I understand how risky agriculture can be. 
It wouldn't be so risky if we could control the weather. That's one of the things we haven't figured out how to do yet. It wouldn't be so risky if we could make it rain all the time. There would be hay to feed the cows. Somehow, that doesn't happen all the time, I know." End quote. Once again, January 20th, 2006, it's no questions asked. If it doesn't appear on the wealthy person's news, they're so duped, they don't consider it news, even if it's right in front of their faces. How can we be at the height of the information age? when most people do not have a clue as to what's going on. Weather modification without public oversight. There are bills in both houses of Congress pertaining to that right now. Senate Bill 517 and House Bill 2995. I had a high school teacher, Mr. Lou Cooch who used to be fond of saying the best way to keep a secret is to mimeograph it and hand it out. I guess old Cooch was right after all. There's life out there further watching us. And there likely is. At least there's likely life out there. And likely they've been through this critical stage of civilization where it's do or die. What's it gonna be? people. I wish